Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Dork Side of the Zalia Friendly Neighborhood Dork on the Road. Like many of you, I'm sure, whenever I tell people I ride motorcycles, one of the first things they say or mention or, or allude to is how dangerous it is. And yes, it is slightly more dangerous than driving in a car, but it doesn't have to be as dangerous as most non-motorcyclists think it is. And today I'm going to tell you five ways to increase your safety while riding a motorcycle. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you've heard the concern. It's concern, but it's kind of condescending too, like insinuating that I don't know that it's dangerous to ride a motorcycle. It's concerned comments of your friends and family, you know, that they don't, they say, oh, you ride a motorcycle, it's so dangerous. Oh, do you want to kill yourself? Oh, we call motorcyclists organ donors. Oh, blah, 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 blah. And yet thousands and thousands and millions probably of riders uh, ride safely every year and don't get into accidents. And I know what the statistics say, but I also think they're inflated uh, and by, I'm going to be quite frank with you, by idiots. And so an alternate title to this, this video might be five ways to not be an idiot while you ride a motorcycle. Number one is, and some of these are stupid obvious, and yet people don't seem to understand them. Number one is don't drink and drive. I don't have the statistics in front of me, but I know that an overwhelmingly large percentage of accidents on, on motorcycles are alcohol and drug related. So if you don't uh, do drugs or drink alcohol when you ride a motorcycle, your chances of getting to an accident uh, decrease, right? So don't drink and ride. Don't do drugs and ride. I drink, I'm a drinker. I, I drink the beers sometimes. That's all I'm saying. I love a good whiskey, I love a good beer. I like to drink with my friends, but I will not get on my bike if I've had, I have done it, I guess, after one beer with dinner or something, but for the most part, if I've had any alcohol at all, I won't get on the bike. That's because motorcycling takes all of your concentration. It's different than riding in a car, or driving a car, obviously. It's less forgiving, there's less room for error. Your car doesn't fall over when you don't pay attention at a stop sign, right? Uh, and what is a minor fender bender in a car could be uh, a fatal accident on a motorcycle. And so, for instance, somebody rear-ending you at 20 miles an hour while you're stopped could kill you on a motorcycle. So you have to be aware and ready and, you know, uh, hitting gravel in a car on a corner is no big deal. On a motorcycle, that could be it for you. So you got to be careful. So you need to be in fully in control of your mental faculties. And the best way to do that is to not be intoxicated. You know what I'm saying? Checking out this park I've never been to before. Helmick State Park. I've passed that sign like 10,000 times in my life, but I've never been down here. So I decided to ride out and check it out. Let's look around. So number one, don't be inebriated. Ride sober. That's tip. <laughs> super obvious tip number one. Maybe I should call this video five super obvious ways to be more safe while motorcycling. So number two is, kind of goes together with the don't be an idiot thing. Uh, don't ride like an asshole. And I like to go fast. I mean, I got into motorcycling because I like to go fast, like many of you. Um, but I don't like to pass people illegally. I don't like to go 30, 40 miles an hour over the speed limit. I like to take it I like to take corners fast, but not crazy fast. I see way too many videos of guys going into a corner at an unreasonable speed and finding themselves jumping off the edge, you know, leaving the pavement, either target fixating or just not committing to the corner or hitting unexpected gravel. And you're just taking unnecessary risks. So uh, don't take unnecessary risks. I'm not saying that you ride around uh, with training wheels and drive the speed limit all the time and take corners at their posted speed. Ugh, no, it's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying don't take unnecessary risks. Don't ride like an asshole. Don't pass when you don't need to. Don't follow too closely. Don't Excessive speed is another one of the most common uh, factors in motorcycle accidents and those statistics that you see about how common or how often people get into accidents. So if you can avoid drinking and avoid excessive speed, you can drastically reduce your chances of getting into a motorcycle accident. And you know what? I don't want to get into a motorcycle accident. Do you? I don't. So. I don't drink and I try to, you know, ride at a reasonable speed. Not the speed limit all the time, but a reasonable speed. You can watch me ride. Number three, so uh, another one of the most common, ooh, watch it bird, causes of accidents is another car, is a car hitting a motorcyclist. And this most often happens in traffic. So if you saw the Virginia Tech study, 
about why we crash um, that was a big one other cars so the, the most statistically the most dangerous place to be a motorcyclist is in the city where there's a lot of cars coming from a lot of different directions intersections are dangerous so if you do your best and I'm not saying you do it all the time but you don't see a lot of videos of me riding through the city because I like to get out on the back roads where it's just me and not a lot of traffic the more you can reduce the number of of uh, directions cars are coming at you the safer you'll be so if you can avoid riding in traffic stay out of the city and when you are in the city be careful look behind you getting rear-ended is a very common cause of accidents so you've got to keep your eye on the rearview mirror flash that brake light do stuff like that just to make sure the drivers are aware of you because they don't see you you have to assume they don't see you <laughs> as a motorcyclist so avoid traffic as much as possible is another way to reduce the likelihood of getting into an accident increase your motorcycle safety traffic is bad other cars are the enemy they're the most dangerous thing because you can control what you do so if you do number one and number two you reduce your self-inflicted capability to cause an accident but the only way to avoid other people causing an accident involving you is to avoid other people and so do your best to avoid traffic if you live in the city i don't know what to tell you um, I mean, I live in our city, but I don't have to drive through the city all the time. It's easy enough for me to get out of town. Be careful, watch your ass. I hope you have lane splitting. That's why filtering is so much safer because you reduce your chances of getting rear-ended because you're protected up in between the cars. So cities that have that, and states that have that, have fewer motorcycle accidents, at least rear endings. Number four, and again, I'm sorry, some of these are stupid obvious, but at the same time, I feel like necessary because five minutes ago, on this very ride, a dude I saw at an intersection went by wearing shorts and a t-shirt and a helmet. And number four is wear your gear. Every time my wife is like, ah, oh, motorcycles are so dangerous. I'm like, it's, those statistics have to be influenced uh, by those guys that don't wear any gear. The severity of your accident increases greatly. I mean, I'm, I like my skin, you know? I get that it's hot, it's hot. It gets hot outside. Well, I'd rather sweat than bleed, and if it's too hot to wear my gear, then it's too hot to ride. Well, if you drink a lot of water and try to get the air flowing, yeah, that shit can be mitigated. I don't know, I don't like to ride when it's 90, 95, 100. I will, but I don't like it, um, because I wear all my gear, especially on the highway. I'll sometimes around town wear a pair of jeans with my jacket, gloves, and helmet, but I don't go on the highway. I won't go highway speeds without full head-to-toe gear. At Gat, baby. Really, it's at Gat, at, at all the gear almost all the time and i realize i'm taking a risk when i do that but when i'm just running down the block to the gas station and back sometimes it's just jacket gloves helmet and the last video i put on i rode around a uh, campground at 15 miles an hour with just a helmet on but that is a calculated risk on my part so wear your gear these are stupid obvious but people don't do it you know road rash is not your friend picture getting uh the tiny pebbles of gravel cleaned out of an open wound with a wire brush that's what they do in the er when you get road rash so uh or picture being being like dang my jacket got ruined <laughs> i would rather be buying a new jacket than in incredible pain wally an angry and condescending medical practitioner lectures me on the dangers of motorcycle riding without gear while scraping all of the pebbles out of my wounds alcohol speed traffic gear and number five ride defensively assume the other drivers can't see you because most of the time they don't so if you pretend you're invisible or assume you're invisible pay attention to what cars are doing watch as they nudge you can tell if a car is going to turn or which way it's going to turn if it's signaling or not by the way it's angled right it's just like human beings they they point towards where they're going to go or they point towards the person they like in the room right well when someone's turning their car they'll angle it to the right or to the left regardless of whether or not they're signaling and uh you just got to be ready to anticipate that move don't follow too closely uh anytime i come up to an intersection and there's a car on the side of the road that wants to pull onto the road that i'm on covering the brakes because that guy maybe doesn't see me and he'll pull right out in front of me you've got to be prepared you got to be vigilant always assume you're invisible and keep your eyes open you can't get complacent on a bike you just can't and the most dangerous time in a motorcyclist's life supposedly is between two and five thousand miles because that's when you start to feel competent and you start doing things by on autopilot just a little bit and uh, you're not competent yet in fact you're never competent enough to not pay attention stay vigilant find yourself getting tired take a break someone's signaling to turn right you gotta uh, you gotta anticipate that they might turn in front of you I've seen lots of videos lots of accident videos where that was what happened um, but if you do those five things together if you don't 
ride inebriated. You don't ride reckless. Avoid traffic as much as possible. Wear your gear and when you are around traffic or really all the time, just be present, mindful, okay? Ride like the other traffic can't see you. You gotta be mindful, be aware, be in the moment. That's the joy of motorcycling. It forces you to do that. There's nothing earth shattering in those five tips, guys. I'm not trying to tell you that this is, uh, this is infinite wisdom that I've uncovered. This is obvious stuff, but if you're a new rider, worried about safety, just getting into it, or even an old rider, I don't know. Maybe there's something there. I doubt it, because I bet you've all been around the block a time or two, but there's other things, other easy, important ways to maintain, to increase your safety. Man, leave them in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I hope that helped a little. I really appreciate you watching. Thank you very much. And as always, one, don't forget about the Dorks in the Road group ride and meetup coming up on August 12th. Uh, I'll try to remember to post the Facebook event below and hope to see you there if you're in Oregon. And two, as always, do not forget to be excellent to each other. Bye, thank you.